Start the year off right. That's what West Ham should do. Welcome back to another match preview. West Ham United versus Brighton Hove Albion. It's the start of the second half of the season. We have faced everyone once. And uh, let's have a look at um, how we've... Uh, it, is, this is going to be a match preview. But it's going to be a first half of the season review as well. Um, and I am recording this around quarter past midnight of the new year. So happy new year to everyone. And uh, if you've got a new year's resolution, you probably just should have started it instead of waiting for the new year to start. Uh, so if you want to improve something, don't wait uh, for a new year uh, thing to happen. Don't wait for the year to start. Just do it. But that's just my opinion. That's what I'm going to do uh, with my goals as well. But let's get into it, man. We've got Brighton and Hove Albion. And uh, we beat them for the first time ever in the Premier League. Uh, last time we beat them, were, before that, was in the Championship. And it was one of the best wins of the season by a long mile. As in West Ham wins. Because... We needed to beat them. We were utmost desperate to beat them. And ultimately, it was unexpected. And it, and it shouldn't be unexpected, to be honest with you, to, uh, to beat Brighton as West Ham. You should at least beat them once in the last 10 or whatever it was before that game. I'm not sure we'll beat them again. As in this, uh, as in, well, technically tomorrow now. Uh, I, they've come off of a very good win against Tottenham. We've come off a very good win against Arsenal. I see both teams being fired up, thinking, let's kick on from this sort of thing, even though we've won two before. They haven't been on the best of form as of recent from what I remember, but they started to pick up back up again. They've got a lot of injuries, and they've got a suspension to Lewis Dunk, who I think is the key part of them defending because they're not they're a very all-out attack kind of team in my opinion they're very open and that's how we found gaps last time Mohamed Kudus will play this game this will be his last game before AFCON and I'm gonna miss him we will miss Mohamed Kudus I don't think we missed a, a player to AFCON this badly since Diafra Sacco uh, and Kuyate when he was playing uh, well and I don't think we could play the same way at the Amex. That's the way we did at the London Stadium. We 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 defended really deep. Really, really deep. And we got to be aware again. Ariola was playing out of his skin in that second half. Uh, Ward Prowse scored in that game. Antonio with a brilliant goal in that game. And Bowen scored in that game as well. Adam Webster had a howler. So the thing is, Igor is injured. Which is a shame because Igor was one of the reasons why we won that European trophy. If you remember, he was the Fiorentina centre-back that should have taken down Jared Bowen. And, uh, yeah. Maybe Adam Webster might come back in. I don't know what his injury status is. Because I know Van Heck has been very good for them. I think that's all their centre-backs left. Unless they play Veltman there. Because Veltman can play centre-back. Uh, they've got a lot of injuries, as I've said. But a stupid yard is back. And he's got an amazing goal against Tottenham. And he was probably the left back of the season last season. We've got probably the left back of the season this season in Emerson Palmieri. Emerson has been sensational. He did work very well against Saka in our Arsenal game. Uh, we're coming back off that Arsenal win with hopefully confidence. But every time we beat one of these big teams, we seem to fuck it. And that's what we did against Tottenham, where we beat Tottenham and then we got battered by Fulham. Now, if Moyes deserves this two new two-year contract and if... Uh, the team are really, you know, turning a corner. We've got to put in another good performance because we played well against Arsenal. As much as Arsenal fans don't like to say it, as West Ham weren't that good and they were dominant. We're playing another possession-based team where we've beaten the possession-based teams throughout the season that are like outside of Man City and Liverpool with the Tottenham's, the Arsenal's, the, the Brighton's, the main guys that are in possession. We're facing them again. It will be monumental in this European race. Monumental in our form. Monumental to face a Brighton to do the double over them. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be a draw. I think both teams really want to 
hang on to this European battle. It helps that Man United are fucking awful. And I know Tottenham won, but... And I know we're just below them now, but realistically, we, we're not going to finish above Tottenham. Not only do they have one game a week uh, throughout the whole season, but they're going to go in a bit of form where they can work on themselves as well. And uh, maybe next season. Maybe we're both in Europe next season, if you want to look at that. But I don't really care that much. As long as we finish in a European spot, I'm okay. Uh, I'm, I'm very confident we'll finish a, below a shit team like Chelsea because Chelsea are awful. And if you really watched that Luton game, they weren't really that good. Um, but moving on, let's talk about the first half of the season. Um, going into the season, Alvarez and Ward Prowse wasn't confirmed over the um, into the Bournemouth game where we signed them. Uh, well, well, even though they were just about confirmed, like, I think Ward Prowse signed in a week, made his debut against Chelsea. So did Alvarez was confirmed, but too close to Chelsea and stuff like that. Flynn Downs was on his way to move to Southampton, so our midfield pivot consisted of Paqueta and Suchek. Four hours just in front, and so on and so forth. And we've got Bournemouth in a couple of weeks, um, and that'll be a hard game. I, wa I watched uh, a bit. I had double screened the Fulham Arsenal and Tottenham Bournemouth game. But Bournemouth created a lot of chances. They just sometimes don't put the ball in the back of the net, but they put Fulham to the sword, who put us to the sword. That's going to be a really, really tough game. Like, I think they're way better than they were last year. Like, way better in terms of confidence and getting the best out of their players. And recruitment has been fantastic. Uh, when we, so, when we drew against Bournemouth, I remember thinking at the time, this is the start of their Iriola project, their new manager. And I was thinking, like, we've missed an opportunity to win here because we got one, one goal and then we sat back. So, I wasn't confident, but... I wasn't even that confident going into the Chelsea game. A lot of Chelsea fans were confident that we were going to break the duck of going out to going to our ground and um, <clears throat> and uh, pretty much uh, beating us because they felt the good the, the feel good factor. Well, we know that they got egg in their face after that. But as soon as I saw their lineup, it was Chilwell, Trickmaker, Sterling, and Jackson. I was like, how are they going to score? How are they going to score? I was then confident because well, I was in the pub. I think I was watching a. Uh, I think I was watching Aston Villa Everton or something at, uh, at the Battle Ball in Stratford. And then I saw the lineup. I was like, I, we could get something here. And we did. We won 3 1. And then we beat Brighton and Luton. Kicked off the season. I'm like, okay, let's carry this on. We played well in the first half against Man City, then bottled it in the second half. We could have done way better with the goals that were conceded. Lost to Liverpool, Anfield, okay. We then beat Sheffield United, which. Okay, you beat Sheffield United at home, big whoop. Then we drew to Newcastle where, again, we bottled it and then pulled it back where we should have, again, we should have put to bed. Um, but in the second half, we bottled it and then could have saved us. Then we got battered by Villa. Then we went on a rough patch where you start to see Moyes' weaknesses again. The the third part of the going up to the international break again, the Villa, Everton, Brentford and scraping a win against Forest, coming back and then winning against Burnley and uh I think that was and then we're back here where we are because like I think I think the next game was the Tottenham game and then so on and so forth like we've had results up and down and the table doesn't lie in a sense but there was times where Man United was four points off Manchester City and I didn't believe Man United were any, any good at all they're gonna pull off wins at Villa because they get lucky like that they have pace sometimes where they could that they use and they're just very this they're doing this a lot just up and down and then they come up against us and lose like whatever so when we, when I look at ourselves at the table and I'm looking at us in European spaces I'm like I don't I can't pick up many good like many like like performances where I'm like you played well like as in team performances I can say Chelsea yeah. Uh, in the second half, when we went down to 10 men, yes. Brighton, yeah, fair enough. Arsenal, yeah, fair enough. Um, Man United, yeah, fair enough. I don't think we performed that well against Luton. I think we did okay. But going into the team, is Zuma going to be back for this game? Probably, if I hope so. As much as Ogbonna played well, and he played well against Brighton in the home game. 
can't do week in, week out football, but let's just trust our body. Doubt us one. He can. Let's hope he play, plays one well again. Uh, we won't. It won't be at Anfield, so maybe that it was just Anfield tax. But Ogbonna probably can't play week in, week out. But Ogbonna and Mavropanos have to play. Also, Tino Kera is going to Monaco, so he probably won't be in the squad. Um, but he will be going to Monaco. It's a shame, but we'll make a when that gets confirmed. I'll talk about that more. So it'll be Ariola probably Sufo, and we're going to assume it's Mavropanos and Ogbonna. I hope it's Zuma. But it's going to probably be Mavro Panos on Ogbonna. Then if again, it's also probably going to AFCON. So we won't see him anyway. Uh, Emerson. And then it'll be the same team apart from Pakita. So Ben Rama will probably come in. And then it'll be Suchek, Alvarez, Ward Prowse, Kunis, Bowen, and uh, Ben Rama. Ben Rama and Maxwell Corne will not be going to the AFCON. Assuming Corne will be sold. Because Moyes doesn't play. If I was Corne, I'd be like, I want to go. <laughs> Uh, if I was called, I'd be like, I want to go. Like, I'm not going to get played anyway. Uh, but when Kudus goes, who plays? Because Paketa said on Instagram, he said he's only going to be out for a week. But then it'll be Paketa, Ben Rama, Bowen. Who's going to play? Is he going to play Paketa false nine? Uh, Moyes, is he going to play Danny Ings up front? Which is the thing I think he'll do. Is he going to play Paketa on the left four hours on the right? Which I can see him doing. I really fucking hope he doesn't. Uh, we don't have enough attacking options. Good attacking options. Ben Rubber's not good enough. Fordas is not good enough. Um, we saw that at Anfield. And ben Rubber didn't play badly against Arsenal in the second half, but can't pass a fucking ball, can he? Doesn't test the keeper. It's the same criticisms that we're, that we're going to see. Um, and there's probably a, not, it's probably more than just the fact that he fell out with the Argenti Argentinian. Algerian manager, he's not good enough. Uh, for that squad in general. Um, coming up against Brighton. You never know what, you, what you're going to get with Brighton. But you never know what you're going to get with West Ham. Despite us being sixth. It'll be a really good chance to close in. Still on. Like the teams we're competing with. Um, if we win we are one point behind the fifth place. That might get Champions League. That might not. Probably won't this year. Um, I don't see us getting Champions League. Unless we win the Europa. I can see us getting to the semis in the Europa. But one way or another, in the Europa League, we are going to face Liverpool. I can just see it. We are going to face Liverpool at one point in this Europa League campaign. And that will probably be the end of our Europa League campaign. Well, when it comes to that. We'll come up against Liverpool, even in the two-legged tie where it's at Anfield and the London Stadium, or in the final. It's going to happen. There's other teams there that, like, Roma can get through the playoffs. Jose Mourinho, Jose Mourinho, sorry, knows how to win uh, cups. You can come up against the Sporting Lisbon and Atalanta and so on and so forth. But when it comes to race for Europe, another season in Europe will do for me. I don't care which which European competition it is. I'll take another season in the Conference League. Of course I fucking would. Um, I'll take another season in the Europa League. Ob obviously I would. And I would take a season in the Champions League. Even though the format, the new format is fucking shit. Even though there was rumours of the old for, old format just staying as it is, I fucking doubt it. I don't even think that was a reliable source that reported that anyway. But we will see. And that is it. I've talked about a lot in this preview. And it's only been 40 minutes really. But make sure to like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Happy New Year as I just said. Social medias are in the description if you want to follow me. And the email for the inquiries. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.